Hey everyone, it's Chris from Smithy Fitness. Welcome back. It's May 1st, 2024. It's my first official Farmer's Carry video of the new year. It's been almost five years since I started doing these videos. I thought it was time to do a new one, a fresh edition to remind you of all the great benefits. So let's go for a walk. So what I like to do is I get to the field I take my shoes and socks off. When the weather gets a little nicer, I'll take the shirt off too, of course. And I'll set my timer for 60 minutes. And I only have two rules. Um, I'm, I wanna, well, I guess I have three rules. The first one is to enjoy myself, you know, kinda have fun. I'm gonna do some work, um, but I'm not rushing. I just keep moving the whole time. And regarding that, I have a rule to never sit down and I have a rule to as much as possible breathe through my nose. Um, I can't now because I'm talking to you but breathing through your nose is far more efficient, good for your breathing, good for your breath uh, than breathing out of your mouth. So then that's just in general but uh, in workouts as well until you really need it if you're really pushing it then you gotta go through your mouth but Otherwise, stay standing the whole time. Keep moving for the full 60 minutes for me. And, uh, you know, just steadily get some work. So, of course, I'm doing farmer's carries back and forth on the field. I got the 20 kilo bell and the 24 kilo bell. Remember to start light, okay? We don't need to go heavy. It's May. We want to still be having fun and doing workouts into November. So start with something light. And then every couple few weeks or a month, you go heavier. Now, of course, I'm gonna do push-ups as well. As you know, we do the carry, we do push-ups, pull-ups, and we do some sprints. So I, I tend to do four or five sets of 30, but if you've only got 10 right now, you know, it's important not to go maximum. We're just trying to accumulate a bunch of work. So you could do five sets of 10, and then maybe next week, five sets of 12, or next workout that is. But you don't wanna do 10 if that's your max. And if your max is 30, you don't wanna do 10. <laughs> you know, you wanna do maybe two thirds of your max, but a bunch of sets. Well, I have no idea how many that is, but I'm gonna say it's 30. And then, I'll go over and do some pull-ups. Now, the pull-up bar, whoops. The pull-up bar is pretty fat and it's generally slippery. So I tend to just wet my hands a tiny bit to give me a little tacky because, you know, we don't want the grip to be the uh, determining feature of your pull-ups. So I'm only gonna do maybe seven, and I'll do five sets. Oh, it's bright. Uh, let's do it the other way. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> okay. Up. So same idea. You wanna do maybe two thirds of your max on every set. Now look. If you don't have pull-ups, just don't do them for now. You know, carry more. I'll go back and forth on the field three times or four times. If you don't have pull-ups, go back and forth five or six times. So one thing I'm trying to incorporate into my workouts now is to do a sprint, probably three or, three or four sprints while I'm out here. And by sprinting, you've got to be really careful. You can't go too hard, too fast. So if you haven't sprinted in years and years, you know, really just do a jog this time. But in the future, you know, go a jog plus 5% speed, plus 10% speed, you know, until you're, you know, 80% of your fastest speed. And, you know, slowly, you've got to work up to your sprints uh, in a very measured way because it's very easy to pull a hamstring or a calf muscle. So again, we really want to be having fun with the workouts and doing it for, you know, the next months 
not just for uh, today and then get injured. So I'm going to go back, start around here, and I'll run to the, to the uh, uprights, and let's see how I do. Something else I like to do every workout is some air squats. Now, I've had a little bit of a hip injury. It's much better than it was, but even still I'm finding, you know, squatting is a little bit challenged for me. So there's this nice hill here. I've got a nice elevation where my heels are quite a bit higher than my toes. I don't know if you can see it on camera very well, but you know, there's probably two inches of difference. And it really makes the squat much easier. So I can go down with less stress than if I was on flat ground. It's better for my back as well. The back is straighter, so even if you can come around and look at the side, you can sort of see that my back angle more or less stays the same through the whole thing. So again, I'd recommend two, three, four sets of 12, 15 squats. That's great. Hit full depth or as deep as you can. And we just keep improving week by week. So it's important to have fun, right? We're gonna do squats and push-ups and pull-ups and we're outside in the fresh air and we're grounding with our bare foot. It's all fun, but we wanna have some real fun um, and not just tick the boxes on your push-ups and such. And for me, if you've watched me at all, you know I love soccer. It's a sport I played as a kid. I still have great fun kicking the ball around. So I always have the ball with me. And I'm just gonna take it and stick handle a bit with my feet and see if I can nail one uh, into the net. Uh, maybe top corner, who knows, it doesn't even really matter. But let's see. Oh, that was pretty good power. Not in the corner, but that scores a lot of goals. Have some fun with your workouts and just keep it going all summer long. So let's talk about some of the benefits of just doing the carry. Now here you can see I'm walking backwards. Um, definitely good for you to walk backwards. Great for the hip and for the ankles and for the knees. If you're sore in any of those spots, walking backwards can help, uh, help your forward walking or your forward running because it stretches the muscle a slightly different way. So I try to incorporate backwards walking quite often. But the main benefits of farmer's carry is the grip strength you're carrying you're carrying long distance the grip gets fatigued there's a direct correlation between grip strength and longevity and uh, what comes first uh, we don't really know but build your grip strength statistically helps you live longer also we're burning calories it's not so heavy that we can't do this every day you can you know swap into lighter bells if you're fatigued or heavier bells if you uh, you know really want to go for it one day you're feeling great so burning fat is great traps okay near my neck uh, the trapezius is holding me up and I'm gonna build those muscles because of the time under tension also the forearms when I did my 90 day challenge which is almost five years ago now all documented in my initial videos but my uh, forearms grew between half an inch and three quarters and it maybe even a full inch over the 90 days they're working super hard I have different weighted bells here 20 and a 24 so it's making to stay upright it's making my obliques my side abs work harder because my body wants to kind of uh, sorry do this is this this side's heavier. To stay with good posture, I've got to work my abs. So the abs are working. You know, there's so many, so many good things about farmer's carries, and especially the long distance ones for the fat burning. Uh, I really recommend you keep it part of your program. And the weather's nice, let's take advantage of it. Once a week, twice a week, five days a week, whatever you can do. Uh, it'll benefit you in a huge manner. All right, the first one of 2024 is done. Thanks a lot for uh, tuning in. 
Let me know how your workouts are going and let's build some muscle and let's get ripped. Take care guys, see you in the next one.